Welcome, everybody. I'm very excited to see all of you here, and I think this is so important. It's something I'm very passionate about. I've been a psychiatric nurse since directly out of nursing school. Um, so I think it's, it's awesome. Um, I think we need to recognize our specialty just as much as any specialty in nursing. And I'm so excited that you're all here today to talk about this. So my challenge is to talk about the state of education and practice um, as we stand today. Um, I don't really have anything to disclose, though um, I do work in research. I'm not, I'm not funded by clinical trials right now. So um, my objectives today are to identify some of the format of psychiatric nursing. Um, I see a lot, of this, a lot of folks in this room who probably were educated when I was, and things have changed. Um, not only has practice changed, but the way that we're training our nurses has changed. And I think that going forward, I would like to see all of us leave this room with the challenge of how do we interact with our students and what are we doing to make them better nurses and better nurse practitioners and educators going forward. Um, so challenges in maximizing those learning experiences for students at all levels and preparing them for what they're going to be doing when they get to work. So what did we learn from last year? Um, did all of you attend last year? Or can it just show of hands who was here? Um, great, so welcome back. Um, you know, we divided things up into three baskets, education, practice, and policy. And when, what I took um, from all of the information that was collected last year were a couple of key, what I thought were some key points that came out of those groups. Um, when, when our education group got together, um, one of the issues that kind of came clear was that a lot of our BSN students see the tech role. They don't get to see the nursing role. And we wondered, why is that? You know, when, when I was educated, um, we followed the techs around. We didn't do a lot of the nurse work. We weren't allowed to pass meds. We, um, we pre-labbed. We kind of did a lot of stuff, but we didn't see what those nurses did. And that impacts the way that they're learning. Um, so hopefully when you hear about the DEU model later on today, that that's going to open your eyes about how we teach BSN students. Um, also, the economics of psychiatric care are impacting what our students get to see. Lengths of stay are very short. When I was trained, our inpatient stays could be months. And now it's a couple of days, if you're lucky. Um, when I was working in residential, we had our kids for 18 months. And now it's three months. Um, so the exposure that our students have to patient care at various levels is much shorter. And also that there is some stigma about psychiatric nursing. Um, I went to a training that was on um, crisis management and kind of large scale issues and um, one of the nurses who was an ER nurse said, well, what do our psych nurses do, have group? <laughs> I said, you know, we bring a lot to the table. That's not just having group. And so I think when we're looking at mental health first aid and, and working with pa people at all levels experiencing different crises in their lives, um, it's, it, we have value and we need to highlight that. Um, so then moving on to practice, we did learn that we have huge passion for our work and for our patients and that came clear. And that's something that we wanna bolster today. Um, we need to expand the idea of our practice setting where are we working? It's not just in the hospital. It's clinics, it's jails, it's schools, um, it's uh, primary care clinics. We're practicing psychiatry in lots of different settings. We're having to take care of sicker patients who have complex medical needs. So we need to broaden our horizons with where we're going to teach nursing, where we're going to practice nursing. And then defining that role. Um, some of the challenges, I think, as we move into advanced practice especially, as many people see us as the nurse. How do you transition into being the advanced practice nurse and the care provider? Um, and how, how does that impact what you're learning, what you're doing? And then in our policy basket, we talked about the scope of practice. You know, it hasn't really been that long that we have practiced completely independently, um, that we've been able to prescribe Schedule II medications. That was a huge, um, impact for my work when I first got out of school. So some of these changes are new and we're still, I think, wrestling with where do we go from here. Um, also, things such as uh, reimbursement for services that came up. Um, you know, how is it different when I fill out prior authorization compared to a physician? Um, many of the NPs in the room can probably tell you that there are some differences in the way those things are looked at even if I provide the same information. 
So I think recognizing our skill and what we are doing for our patients is important. And then also the policies associated with mobilizing and retaining the workforce. How do we get people here? How do we keep them here? And how do we keep them engaged for the long haul? So I want to take you back to nursing education. And who remembers the BHN? You remember this, the Basic Human Needs Guide? I remember getting that packet as a first year nursing student and I was gonna fill out that packet and it was gonna be beautiful and perfect and complete and that was all I needed to know and then we were gonna go forward and we'd spend hours on this. And what did the, BN, you remember the parts of the BHN? There was all the physical stuff. There was, you know, are you eating? Are you resting? Are you eliminating correctly? Are you getting activity? All of these things and we learned how to assess every one of those, you know. Uh, how do you pee? When do you pee? How much do you pee? Does it hurt when you pee? What colors you pee? Blah, 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 blah. So those, I mean, we got those down. Um, we talked about safety and security. Do you have a home? Do you have lights? Um, do you feel safe where you're at? Somebody beating you up? Is somebody beating up people around you? Love and belonging. What's your family like? What's your friends like? Do you feel supported? Uh, do you think that there's somebody out there that cares about you? Your self-esteem. Do you like you? Are you important? What are you worth? And self-actualization. So that's all the extras in life. What else do you do? Your spirituality, sexuality, lots of different things. And we spend so much time on some of those top tier ones. And I think we spend a lot less time teaching our students how to assess those other things. But how much of this guide is mental health at its core? Um, the physical is very important, but I don't think we got a lot of teaching on how to assess those other things and how to make sure that they are valued. And then we learned this. Who remembers the NANDA? Oh, yes. Those big sheets. Dr. Kunz Connell was one of my faculty. We had these very large fold. Yes. They're, you know, so we took all that stuff from the BHN and we made our beautiful care plans in multiple colors of ink because we didn't have all these computers back then. And we had all these nursing diagnoses and our PES statements, or that problem, evidence, signs and symptoms. And one of those diagnoses on that care plan had to be mental health. So what do we always reach for, right? Ineffective individual coping. <laughs> and as evidenced by whatever it was and resulting in whatever they do. But how much in our practice today is this kind of the, the, the meat and potatoes of what we do? So I think remembering back to those days and how we're teaching our students now going forward. Oh, so back in my day, we learned, what did we learn? Back rubs, bed making, and bed baths, right? Lots of hands-on, and I have this little guy that we didn't put sheets on the bed like that back in the day. I don't think that's changed. <laughs> um, but we took a lot of time, you know, taking care of people. Uh, we were told, look at the patient. No matter how many things are beeping in the room, you look at the patient first. And I think that things are changing. And uh, if, you know, things are different, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, in psychiatric nursing back in the day, um, we got a quarter during our junior year. Like I said, it was primarily inpatient care, no med passing. Thank you. One-to-one um, -one with the patient if they let you and attending some community groups. Um, now, we're teaching mental health in the context of other settings, med surge, critical care, you name it. There's lots of different clinical sites. We have lots of challenges, multi-ethnic, multi-racial, socioeconomic issues, educational differences, language barriers, disabilities, you name it. And you know, now it's all about the lines and the tubes and the monitors. Well, our patients have electronics too. It's Twitter, it's Facebook, it's Instagram, Snapchat, you name it. So we have our own electronics that we got to learn. We're teaching our students to use critical thinking, to learn therapeutic communication. Um, in that senior preceptorship, they're now looking at um, some dedicated time to really focus on psychiatric nursing. You're going to hear about the DEU model today. So this is different than the way I was trained. This is where students are being paired up with staff nurses. So they're actually learning that professional role. How do they interact with other staff? How do they manage things on the unit? How do they work with other professionals? So this is something that's very exciting that I think is going to give our students some of that work experience, maybe hands-on while they're getting trained so that if they're thinking of going into the master's program, they're better equipped right out of the gate. 
Um, they're still getting their didactics, learning about affective disorder, psychosis, personality disorders, anxiety, et cetera, and then disorders that primarily affect children. Um, the advanced tracks that you'll hear about as well, you know, the BSN to the DNP. I got a lot of this info from my folks at Creighton, but um, same things at UNMC as far as the credit hours that are required, the practicum hours, the, inter the emphasis on interprofessional nature of, of mental health care. <clears throat> and then folks who want to do a postgraduate certificate. Something that I brought from UNMC and I challenge you going forward is that preceptor role and the importance if you are in advanced practice to taking students and what you're doing to shape them going forward. So this came out of their handbook um, saying it's important to shape the development of nurse practitioners. And so I think you know all of you going forward, please open yourselves to taking those students on and teaching them about our discipline and what we do. Um, so we're using knowledge, concepts, theories from nursing, other disciplines to provide care for our patients, working collaboratively with multiple disciplines, and managing problems at individual family and community levels. Um, so I think going forward something, and, and you're going to hear later, Dr. Joe Evans will talk about some work that he's done using mental health in primary care settings. But something going forward, I attended a, a Beacon-sponsored event that talked about collaborative practice and the role of a care manager. We talk a lot about what APRNs do in psychiatry, but how do we get bachelor's prepared nurses ready to do things? And this is a role that myself and Tina Vest, who you'll meet later, we were like, nurses should do this. So the role of a care manager facilitating patient engagement um, in care at the primary care level. And you know, think about nurses, what do we do? Care relationships, that's our thing. Um, these managers are systematically doing an initial assessment and follow-up, and what do we do? An initial assessment and ongoing assessments of needs as time goes by. They're tracking responses to treatment, and what are we doing? Care planning, evaluating our goals, what's getting better, what's not, what do we need to change? Supporting the treatment plan with a primary care provider, we're working with lots of different providers as nurses. Reviewing challenging patients with maybe that psychiatric consultant. We're working with physicians, therapists, psychologists, whomever, and maybe as an APRN, you're in that role as the psych consultant. Um, so this is an exciting thing, and I hope you guys keep your ears peeled for it when collaborative care becomes possibly more of a, of a thing in, in Nebraska. So here's my little Lucy, I love her. And it says the doctor is in, but for today's purpose, I'm gonna put the nurses in. <clears throat> Cause we are having, and we have lots of roles and I put them in stars because I think that's what we are and what we do. As a nurse, a provider, a therapist, a social worker, case manager, role model and teacher, um, we are doing, we are wearing multiple hats and we should be proud of that. And I wanna leave you kind of going forward. One of my faculty at Creighton, Betty, if any of you were trained there, Betty Sturgeon taught community health nursing, but I remember the first day she walked into our classroom and she said, nursing is science plus love. That's all, science plus love. And so I leave you with that today going forward is to keep that in the back of your mind. So thank you, welcome, enjoy your day.